For decades, the story of human evolution was portrayed as a straight, linear path, a progressive journey from our ape-like ancestors to modern humans. However, as more fossil discoveries are made, that tidy narrative has been shattered. The truth is that our evolutionary tree is bushier and more complex than we ever imagined, with many branches and dead ends. One of the most fascinating and enigmatic of those branches is Homo naledi. Let's dive into what the evidence reveals so far about this enigmatic branch of our family tree. But before we go any further, make sure you like this video and subscribe now, or this hairy centipede will crawl all over your face while you sleep tonight. Deep underground, in the dank depths of the Rising Star Cave System in South Africa, two cavers, Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker, were venturing where few humans had gone before when they stumbled upon an archaeological treasure trove. This was on 13th of September, 2013. The chamber lies approximately 80 meters from the main cave entrance. Rick and Stephen were said to have squeezed their way through a tiny 18 solomer crack, wriggling like worms for 12 long meters until it finally opened up into a small hidden chamber. As their headlamps swept across the chamber floor, the cavers froze. Scattered among the rocks were what looked unnervingly like ancient human bones. Interestingly, the chamber housing the fossils had been explored by cavers in the early 1990s, during which some bones were rearranged and potential damage may have occurred. However, a significant portion of the chamber floor remained undisturbed until 2013. Rick and Steven quickly snapped some photos of the ghostly remains and hauled themselves back through that tiny crack to get word to the experts. When paleoanthropologists Pedro da Costa Baskov and Lee Berger laid eyes on those first eerie images, they knew this was the real deal, a potential archaeological gold mine. Berger quickly assembled an elite team of underground astronauts in addition to the two cavers. These included six female scientists who were careful, compact, and could contort themselves through the cave's tightest squeezes to reach those distant fossil chambers. For three tough weeks, the elite team camped out and excavated the cramped Dinaletti chamber where the first bones were found. They unearthed an astonishing 1,550 fossil elements, bones, teeth, skulls, and more, all frozen in time for hundreds of thousands of years. These remains painted a tantalizing picture of at least 15 different individuals from a strange, extinct human relative. But that was just the tip of the skeletal iceberg. Months later, the team returned and discovered another jackpot the nearby Lasidi chamber, holding 131 more fossils from at least three more individuals of this mysterious species. As the dusty fossils piled up, one thing became clearly evident. These bony remnants all belong to the same bizarre, stop-you-in-your-tracks hominin population unlike anything seen before. This strange human cousin might have used these deep cave chambers as a kind of ancestral graveyard. The initial 2015 publication in the journal eLife by researchers Lieberger, John Hawkes and their colleagues unveiling the Homo naledi fossil finds from South Africa's Rising Star Cave system generated tremendous scientific interest and intense debate. Their interpretation of the remains showing evidence of deliberate body disposal practices by Homo naledi was a particularly contentious claim. One of the first high-profile rebuttals came from Francis Thackeray in 2015 who favored an alternative explanation of the bodies accumulating through natural death trap processes over time. Anthropologist Amelie Val argued in 2016 there was insufficient evidence for deliberate burial, proposing scenarios like natural mummification instead. The Berger team refuted these critiques in 2017, restating their intentional disposal hypothesis. When those first fossilized bones of Homo naledi were carefully extracted from the cave floor, they left scientists utterly dumbfounded. These remains seemed to merge features from human species separated by millions of years of evolution into one bizarrely chimeric creature. At first, the team could scarcely believe what they were seeing. This anatomical mashup simply didn't make sense based on everything we knew about human evolution at the time. The confused researchers could only assume these fossils must represent some extremely ancient proto-human branching off over one two million years ago. An older cousin for sure, but still a relatively close one in our family tree. Then in 2017, the shocker came. 
New dating technology pinpointed those bizarre hybrid skeletons to a shockingly recent 335,000 and 236,000 years ago. Suddenly, Naledi went from being a quaint ancient aunt to more like a grandniece or cousin you could have bumped into at the prehistoric mall while doing your grocery shopping. The implications were mind-boggling. Not only did these extinct humans look weirdly archaic while living alongside our modern ancestors, but they did so at a time when other large-brained human species like Neanderthals and anatomically modern Homo sapiens were rapidly spreading across the globe. How did these primitive-looking hominins go unnoticed for so long? To get to the bottom of Naledi's mysteries, the scientists had to go bone by bone, examining each skull, tooth, and peculiar body part in granular detail. Fortunately, with over 1,600 fossils representing 15 distinct individual Naledi specimens, an unprecedentedly complete picture of this species could finally take shape. And what emerged was alternately baffling, fascinating, and unlike anything they could have imagined in our ancestral family album. The Homo Naledi fossils represent a remarkable assemblage, a total of 737 anatomical elements, including portions of the skull, jaw, ribs, teeth, limbs, and inner ear bones from individuals of varying ages and sexes. There are old adults, younger adults, juveniles, and even infants represented in the fossil collection. Notably, some of the elements were found articulated or nearly articulated, such as a skull with attached jawbone and nearly complete hands and feet preserved, with representatives of both sexes across multiple age demographics present this is the richest associated assemblage of fossil hominins ever discovered in Africa. Homo naledi exhibited a very primitive or derived mosaic of traits that did not fit expected evolutionary trends of increasing brain and body size through time. Their unique anatomy combined features of early ancient hominins with surprisingly modern characteristics. The skull of naledi had a low cranium with a protruding occipital bun, protruding jaw, and heavy brow ridges, resembling small Homo erectus specimens. Their dentition featured smaller teeth than expected for their small brain size, with incisors overlapping Australopithecine ranges, but smaller canines and postcanines. The hands showed derived features for object manipulation similar to Neanderthals and modern humans, though with less curvature than Homo habilis or Australopithecus sediba. The feet were strikingly modern human-like and well-suited for long-distance walking and running, but with an enhanced grasping ability compared to modern humans. Analysis of multiple Homo naledi skulls from the Denaledi and Lacidi cave chambers has provided insights into their brain size and encephalization levels compared to other hominins. Two male specimens from Denaledi had cranial capacities of around 560 cubic cm, while two females measured approximately 465 cubic cm. Another male skull from Lacidi had a larger cranial volume of 610 cubic cm. Overall, the Denaledi Homo naledi fossils had brain sizes closer to the smaller ranges typical of Australopithecines rather than larger Homo species. For context, the average cranial capacity was around 900 cubic cm for Homo erectus, 1,270 and 1,130 cubic cm for modern human males and females, respectively. The Lacidi male falls within the range of the species Homo habilis and Homo erectus georgicus. Estimates of the encephalization quotient, EQ, a measure of relative brain to body mass, place Homo naledi at around 3.75. This is on par with the small-brained Homo floresiensis from Indonesia, but notably smaller than all other Homo species, which had EQs over 6. Homo erectus georgicus had an EQ of 3.55, while the Australopithecine A africanus was 3.81. Holloway et al.'s 2021 American Journal of Physical Anthropology paper used CT scans to create virtual endocranial reconstructions, impressions of the brain shape of multiple Homo naledi skull specimens. They found the endocranial shape was quite small, but still within the human range, unlike Homo erectus, which had a different brain shape. It remains uncertain whether Homo naledi's small brain size was inherited from the last common ancestors shared with other early Homo, or if it evolved by shrinking more recently along their lineage. Comparisons with fossil evidence of brain evolution across Homo populations may help resolve the origins of Homo naledi's tiny brain case, 
relative to its bipedal, human-like body. A 2020 paper by Hawks and colleagues published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, PNAS, used measurements from arm, leg, and trunk bones to estimate body mass and stature for Homo naledi. They found that males averaged around 1.5 meters tall and 45 kilograms in weight, while females averaged around 1.4 meters tall and 35 kilograms in weight. These estimates suggest that Homo naledi was relatively small-bodied, but still larger than some other hominins. And this made them heavier than Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus sediba, Homo habilis, and Homo floresiensis, but lighter than the larger-bodied Australopithecus afarensis in most early and later Homo populations. In terms of sexual dimorphism, males were around 20% larger than females, similar to the degree seen in Homo erectus and other middle Pleistocene Homo. The vigorously debated aspect of these discovery is whether Homo naledi branched off very early, around two e's three million years ago, contemporaneous with species like Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis, and Australopithecus sediba, or whether Homo naledi diverged more recently as a sister lineage to Homo erectus and other large-brained Homo species. The 2017 Nature paper by Berger et al. suggested Homo naledi could have originated around the same time as other early Homo fossil members, between 2.8, 2.5 million years ago. However, most researchers seem to favor a more recent divergence time for Homo naledi, potentially around 900,000, 800,000 years ago, where they split off as a sister tax into species like Homo antecessor, Homo heidelbergensis, and the lineage leading to modern humans. This more recent timing is based on comparisons of Naledi's anatomical features. Analysis of a large cranial and dental dataset using maximum parsimony methods supports placing Homo naledi among the most basal nodes of the Homo lineage. However, Bayesian analysis of the same data favors the positioning of Homo naledi closer to modern humans than any Homo erectus specimens. Consideration of Homo naledi's postcranial anatomy suggests being a sister taxon to Homo erectus may be more likely. This is because Homo naledi shares many derived hand, foot, and lower limb features with Homo erectus and Homo sapiens that are apparently absent in the earlier species. Yet Homo naledi lacks some derived shoulder, trunk, and hip traits shared by Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. No interpretation can eliminate the necessity of some reversed or parallel evolved traits in Homo naledi's mosaic anatomy. If Homo naledi is a sister to Homo sapiens, then its many ancestral features like small brain size would be reversals. If it branched earlier, then the larger brain and various derived traits shared with Homo sapiens would require parallel evolution. The place of Homo naledi on the evolutionary tree is still unclear. One hypothesis is that they branched off very early from other contemporaneous Homo species like Homo habilis, Homo rudifensis, and Australopithecus sediba. Alternatively, they may be a sister taxon that split from the lineage leading to Homo erectus and other large-brained Homo. Or they diverged more recently as a sister lineage to Homo heidelbergensis and its descendants like modern humans and Neanderthals. Potentially over 900,000 years ago, perhaps even in the Pliocene epoch, interbreeding between Homo and late Australopithecines could also explain their origins. In terms of skull morphology, Homo naledi shows the closest affinities to Homo erectus. Whichever scenario is correct, the Homo naledi fossils have rewritten our understanding of human evolution's complexity. Their small brains coexisted successfully for hundreds of thousands of years with the growing brain expansion in other Homo lineages. This marks the end of this video, so let's hear what you think about the discovery of Homo naledi in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more informational and awe-inspiring videos. See you in the next video.